Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna to be running you through my top five Premiere Pro color grading secrets and hacks that I use on a near daily basis, since at the moment, I'm editing a whole lot of footage. So I wanna share them with you guys, and today we're gonna to be taking this clip from this to this, just like that. It's pretty simple, it's pretty easy, and I wanted to make sure that I have a clip that I can use all of these five little secrets and hacks on, so you can see them and uh, you can use them in your own clips. You know, you can see it in practice, and that's the best part. So without further ado, let's dive into Premiere Pro. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are inside of Premiere Pro and we are in the color grading tab here. This is where all of the, uh, of the goodness goes down. And as you can see, this clip raw is fairly average. If we hit play here, it's fairly noisy. It was shot at a pretty dark time. There's pretty much no natural light coming in whatsoever. And by natural light, of course, I mean, there's light in the sky, but there's no sun. There's nothing going on whatsoever. It's very dark and the shadows are extremely noisy. And believe it or not, this is shot on a Sony a7S III. So I know it's the king of low light, but you tell me, is it really? Canon's not looking so bad now after all. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive into tip number one. And if we come back to the start of this clip, you can see in the backpack, it's very noisy. And tip number one is a somewhat easy way to remove artifacting and digital noise to a degree. It's not a denoiser tool whatsoever, but this is going to, I guess, dial it down quite a lot. And that is by desaturating blues and purples. If we have a look closely, if we just zoom into this clip in just like that, you can see that my backpack one, it's completely black in real life, a little bit of an orangey tinge to it since it's been so used so much and it's quite old now. But nonetheless, you can see that there is a bit of a purple hue here and a blue hue here, then purple and blue and so on and so forth as you make your way down the backpack. And to be honest with you, one of the easiest ways to get rid of artifacting in nearly any clip is removing the blues and purples. And this is because artifacts and a lot of noise really sits in that blue and purple color range. So this is a very, very simple way to do it. So if we just come down here to the hue and saturation sliders, not sliders, we're not in Lightroom, the hue and saturation curves, if we just drop a uh, if we just drop a point here inside of the magentas and then here on the end of the blues, if we're gonna zoom in here so we can see this in real time, we're just gonna make the backpack nice and central here. We're going to begin to drop the blues and we're gonna make it a little heavier on the purple side. Maybe expand this just a little bit. Have us have a little bit more range. You never wanna kinda just have a drop off like that where it's really harsh and, harsh and sharp. You always wanna make sure it's a, it's a little flowy. And just like that, desaturating these blues, maybe pull these back up just a little bit. If we turn this off and then turn it back on, you can see that we have lost a lot of that weird digital noise. Now, if I zoom back out, you can see that the rest of the color is still there. And this is log, so it's already fairly flat. So when we bring back a lot of the other saturation and contrast, we're not gonna get a whole lot of weird color and artifacting in the backpack. And that's exactly what we want. Otherwise, it's gonna ruin our shot. All right, let's move on to tip number two. Okay, so since this clip was shot in log, we're gonna need to bring back the exposure and the saturation. And we're gonna do that by absolutely nailing our exposure using the Lumetri scopes. So if I dive back into Premiere Pro here, you can see that in the top left corner over on the side of effect controls, we have Lumetri scopes. Now, if you don't see this, you just wanna come up to window and then you wanna make sure you have Lumetri scopes ticked there. If you do, great. If not, now you can turn it on. So what is this? And this is a really good question. Pretty much what this is, is right at the 100 here, that is the top, that is clipping, that is the whitest of white, there's no information there whatsoever. And the same down at zero, instead of white, it's black down here. So if you have anything touching zero or 100, there's no information in there whatsoever, and it's either too bright or too dark. So you always wanna be sitting somewhere in the middle. And ideally what you wanna be doing here is you want to be spreading out this range nearly as much as possible. If you get a really big, nice and spread red range, it means your image is full of contrast and it's definitely a lot richer than this one is here. And if it's really squashed together, this one isn't super, super squashed together, but if it's squashed together, it means it's a lot flatter. So how can we use this to our advantage? Well, here it's gonna tell us exactly how far we can and can't push our image before we just lose information completely, before the image starts to fall apart, 
which is brilliant because you may not be editing on a monitor or on a laptop that is gonna show you 100% the color range that you shot in or the, the light range you shot in. So with that being said, let's dive in and let's get this clip sorted. So we're gonna come up into the basic tab here and we're just going to adjust the exposure. We're gonna bring this right back up to something reasonable and then we're also gonna raise the highlights here. So as you can see there, we're now starting to bring some of the highlights back into the game. Uh, but with doing that, we've also lost some of the shadows down here. So we're just gonna start dropping the shadow and then we're gonna increase the contrast to spread this out just a little bit more. Now, as you can see, we're getting a really, really nice spread here. And I'm gonna continue dropping the shadows quite a bit. Maybe even the blacks we want, maybe just a few of those dots touching like that. It's a pretty dark environment, so we don't wanna sell that it was shot in the middle of the day. And then we're gonna come into the tone curve here and we're also going to, to grade it just as such. I much prefer doing light changes in the tone curve. But as you can see here, we now have a much larger spread. If I turn this off, you can see it's a lot more clamped together. And now it looks a little bit more like it's shot in real life. Now, with this being said, of course, the color balance is a little off given it was shot on Sony. So we're just gonna warm up the skin tones a little bit here and add a little bit of green back in there as well. And we're gonna make sure everything is looking great. To be honest with you, we're gonna be fixing this with a LUT in just a minute, but this kind of shows you exactly how the Lumetri scopes work and how you can make sure that you're not clipping or not pushing your image too far. This is an absolute lifesaver. Okay, so moving on to tip number three, and as I just mentioned, this is how to apply LUTs correctly. So first things first, I wanna make sure I'm working with an accurate white balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack up this white balance quite a lot because it was pretty dark and moody. And to be honest with you, I don't think I'm super happy with the skin tones, much more happy with the skin tones now. This is looking a little bit more accurate. Uh, what way should we push here? I think actually, actually that neutral is pretty nice there. Okay, cool. I'm somewhat happy with this now. It looks a little bit nicer than it did before, especially now. Okay, so how do we apply LUTs correctly? Well, there's actually two LUTs, two places you can apply LUTs in Premiere Pro. You have the basic correction tab, which is where you would put your Rec 709 LUT. And then you also have the creative tab here where you would put your, uh, I guess, look LUT or your colors or whatever you'd like to call it. To be honest with you, I don't need to worry about using the correction LUT because all of the LUTs that I use and the LUTs that I sell actually already have the Rec 709 built in. And if you wanna check any of these LUTs out to speed up your color grading workflow like crazy, you can do so by clicking the first link in the description. And if you use this cheeky little discount code at checkout, it'll give you a nice little discount. So without further ado, let's apply some of these LUTs and I'll show you exactly how this is gonna work. If I dive into my LUTs here, to LUTs, cinematic LUTs, here we go. If I dive into Canon, even though this was shot on Sony, um, because I really like the Canon Blue Hour here. I think this is gonna be ideal. It was shot at Blue Hour. So I really think Canon Blue Hour here is gonna absolutely dominate. And just like that, we're gonna apply. Now, as you can see here, even though this black <laughs> backpack looks completely black, it's not because we can see that on the uh, on the scopes here, but we're just gonna dial this LUT back a little bit. And this is really important. Sometimes you wanna put more of the LUT on, sometimes you want a lot less of the LUT on. So you really just need to play around with this intensity slider here and make sure you're already starting off with somewhat of a solid base. Now, to be honest with you, like I said, I usually already have the Rec 709 baked into my LUTs. So doing these corrections here is more or less useless. I can really dial some of these back. I can definitely dial the uh, the contrast back. And if I dial back my, my LUT, which it's definitely not at 100% here, we're just going to get some of the colors and the looks. And now my skin, by the way, is looking absolutely perfect. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I wanted to make sure you knew the difference between putting a look LUT and an input LUT on, the correction LUT. And yeah, more or less, like I said, all of my LUTs already have the Rec 709 built into them. So if you want to check them out, first link in the description. Okay, so now we're here, we are looking fairly clean. I would say a lot of the noise is more or less now baked into the shadows. It's gone, it's disappeared. We desaturated the uh, the blues and the purples, so things are looking good. We then make sure we had an accurate amount and a solid amount of contrast in our shot by using the Lumetri scopes. And now we've added our look and the Canon Blue Hour LUT to this shot. And this is what we're working with. I think this shot is starting to look absolutely great. And if you'd like, look at those skin tones, by the way. If we have a look here, we can turn this off and back on. And as you can see, we're moving in a great direction. But there is a little bit of sauce and a little bit of spice I wanna add to this clip to make it just look a little bit more tasty. And the way we're gonna do that is by using something called masking. Now, if you're coming from Lightroom, you probably already know what masking is, but it definitely doesn't work the same way as it does in Premiere. So 
How do you use masking? Well, as you can see here, if we head into effect controls, you can use these masking tools here, which are great, and we will be using them in a minute. But if I use this masking tool, all of a sudden it's going to start only giving the color grade to the shot that is the area that it's masked in in the shot, if that makes sense. So that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to click this drop down menu here in the uh, Lumetri color tab, and we want to add a new Lumetri color effect. So for example, let's say I wanted to add a custom vignette on this shot, I would add a new Lumetri color effect. Now this is going to have absolutely nothing changed. It's a fresh Lumetri color effect. I'm going to click on the uh, optical mask, the ellipse mask, not the optical. I'm thinking circle, oval. Uh, mask here, we're going to increase the feather like crazy. You never want to do a, a small feather, especially especially on video because obviously things are moving. And then we're just going to draw around exactly where we want masked out. So I might want a little bit more light seeing as it's appearing from the left hand corner. And we're just going to mask that out like that. And we're going to add a little bit more feather here. And then we're going to come down here. We're going to drop the shadows, increase the contrast, and we're going to drop the exposure. And then we're going to invert it to make sure it's selecting the outside of the mask and not the inside. So if we just turn that off and then back on, it's very, very subtle. But little things like this can really add to the production quality of your clips and make them look a whole lot better. It's also going to make me stand out a little bit more from this clip, which makes the subject, which makes the focus of the subject a whole lot better. We're not done here though. So while adding small little vignettes are great and sometimes it's gonna have a bigger impact on your shot than other times, we're gonna add another Lumetri color effect here. We're gonna close these two here so we can work nice and cleanly. And then I'm gonna add a rectangle tool. I'm gonna to zoom out of this shot and we are going to just make this quite big. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a little bit of a foggy vibe at the top of this shot. Nothing too crazy. We're just gonna go with something like this. Make sure, come on, there it is. Make sure that, that is completely out of the picture. And then we're gonna just raise the feather like crazy. And then we're gonna come back to a normal zoom. And then we're just gonna increase the exposure. And that's also gonna add a nice level of contrast in here, as you can see in the Lumetri scopes. Without this, Okay, so for some reason, the Metroscopes wasn't updating, but here we go. If we turn that off and we turn it back on, we can see we've added a nice amount of contrast here. And what I'm also gonna do, make sure that one is selected. I'm also just gonna desaturate it just a little bit to take any kind of color out of those highlights because I don't want any color up there at all. It doesn't belong there. So anyway, this is starting to look really good here. We've masked out, we've applied our LUTs, we've made sure our exposure is and contrast is 100% accurate, and we've made our backpack look a lot cleaner since there was a lot of noise in there. This shot is starting to look really, really nice. I'm loving the colors, I'm loving the tones. Let's move on to tip number five. Okay, so moving on to tip number five. I know we've just spent all this time color grading this clip, and to be honest with you, it looks great. And this is really, really important to have up your sleeve. But let's say you were looking, you were watching a movie, or you saw a photo on Instagram, and you were like, man, I want my footage to look like that. Well, I'm gonna show you how you can steal that inside of Premiere Pro in pretty much one click. All right, let's dive in. So as you can see here, we have this clip and this is already color graded. So this is looking great. We're gonna use this as the example for the one that we wanna steal from, right? And we've got this clip here. This is nearly, I guess, converted to Rec. 709. I've purely just changed some basic correction settings to add back some contrast and make sure the white balance is accurate. So what you wanna do here is let's say we wanna steal this look from and put it on this clip, but you know, this is just a photo in the grand scheme of things, all right? So let's say we're here and let's get to a nicer part of this footage. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna come into color wheels and match and then hit comparison view. Now what this is going to do is this is going to put a side-by-side -side comparison of anywhere you select on the timeline next to anywhere where this playhead is on the timeline. So what you wanna do is you wanna to get to the point where you pretty much want to color match your footage. So let's say right here, and we're just gonna hit apply match. It's one click, it's nothing crazy. Premiere Pro is gonna work its magic and hopefully in about three, two, one. All right, 
we're good. And just like that. Now, this is only gonna change your shadows, midtones, and highlight color settings. That's it. There's nothing more to it. It's not gonna dive into the curves and it's not gonna add a lot or it's gonna add a vignette, nothing like that whatsoever. It's only gonna change the color grading tab of the, the Lumetri color, that's it. But this is still crazy. This is a really, really awesome feature and the comparison view and apply match features are just amazing. So to be honest with you guys, if you are looking at movies or photos and you're like, damn, or even videos on the internet, you're like, man, I really, really want that color grade. Well, this is, this would probably get you about 60 to 70% of the way there. You still need to do some of the work. It's definitely not like a lot, but it's still pretty damn cool. All right, guys, so that is gonna wrap up today's video. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've been able to learn a little bit more about my color grading process inside of Premiere Pro, and hopefully you can apply these tools, tips, and tricks into your own color grading process to uh, level it up, speed up your workflow. But anyway, that is gonna wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new around here, subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you liked today's video, leave a like. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.